your portfolio with the Schwab Network. Available anytime, anywhere, on any device, for free. Schwab Network. Welcome back to the watch list. Want to break down those American Express earnings. It, it's come up off the lows of the day. At one point, it was about to be the worst day of the year for American Express. It was down about 4%. Right now, down about 2.8%. Missed on revenue. Raised the full year guidance. Uh, you know, people are uh, some spenders. The affluent ones are still spending. The others are being a little tighter. Um, Kevin Kennedy, equity analyst at Third Bridge. Melissa Armo, founder, owner of the Stock Swoosh. Great to see you both. There is no, no question that people have been hit with inflation, high housing, all of that, and they're being more particular about where they spend. Melissa, what did you make of the quarter, and do you think American Express stock is a buy? No, I definitely don't think it's a buy right now today. It's down on earnings. The whole market's down today. I actually wouldn't buy anything right now with the way the market's been selling off. But American Express is definitely strong despite the fact that it's down today. It actually tried to turn green at one point here, getting into the close. I think all of the banks this week, though, held up extremely, extremely well considering the way the market sold off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's very interesting. And you say, well, we had some bank earnings in the last week, the first week of earnings season, and some of them were down on the earnings, just like American Express, they gapped down, and then many of them flipped, despite the fact that the market continued lower. So I think it's very, very interesting, because normally you have the banks going with the SPY, but right now the SPY is falling, and we don't know where it's going to land, and you have the banks still rallying. Yes, they sold off a little bit today, but overall, this was still a very good week for banks, despite where the market was. Kevin, what do you say about what's going on with American Express and maybe the competitive landscape for the other credit card companies? Yeah. Now, listen, I understand the skittishness from investors in terms of the growth story, but if you look under the hood, I think there's a lot to like um, in terms of this earnings report. EPS growth was up 21% year over year, excluding the one-time benefit of the certify acquisition or sell-off, pardon. Uh, operating expenses only increased 3% year over year. Build business came in below estimates, but it was still generally in line. And I think that's consistent with the spending uh, challenges we've seen across the board. Um, in terms of the competitive landscape, like listen, American Express plays in the premium card space. In fact, they dominate the premium card space. Uh, a lot of the credit card issuers, be that J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, be that Capital One now to a larger extent, are trying to chase and emulate the strategy that they've been doing for some years. So, yeah, I understand the rotation in, in terms of being challenged from a growth standpoint, but from a fundamental basis, yeah. I just think it, it's still a great company. I think you're also uh, doing a lot of data points concerning, concerning um, the age groups, the different brackets of the U.S. consumers. It is, there is a premium card that's probably close to $700 a year where you get a lot of, you know, nice perks for Uber and Equinox and, and uh, you know, airline tickets, things like that. Um, can you break down, I'm just curious, Kevin, any of the demographics interesting to you right now? Yeah, specifically what our experts have encouraged us to focus on is the proportion of the U.S. built business that's attributable to the millennial and Gen Z cohort. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you think about how credit cards work as a business model and how they become profitable over time in the premium space, you don't get the interest revenue that you would get in a non-premium card. So that means you have to encourage your cardholders to continue spending to increase your card's share of the total wallet. American Express has done a really interesting and dynamic approach to rewards, uh, both in the form of like pure rewards that, that they benefit from the owned network, and then the strategic partnerships they have with select brands that are appeal appealing to the younger demographics. And then that all ties in with the, the Resi acquisition, now the Talk and Rome acquisition. Also, if you think about it from the younger customer's perspective, the payback period or the time to profitability uh, yeah. for these credit cards is much longer than subprime. So capturing them earlier, yeah. graduating them to higher fee cards and getting them to spend over time increases long-term profitability at the cardholder basis.
Yeah. I, I mean, you explained why it's important to have millennials and Gen Z. Not sure you actually told me if there are a lot of millennial and Gen Z using it. But let me give Melissa a chance to give some other thoughts. Look, the credit card companies, there are those who have those high balances at 30%. Um, you know, when you think about the other names in the group, wh what's your takeaway on what the consumer is doing, how the economy is headed, Melissa? Because you said you wouldn't buy anything today. No, I wouldn't buy anything today because there's a strong possibility. I'm not saying 100% conviction, but I'm saying there's a possibility that the market has set the high for the year, and that's it. We're not going to make another new high this year. That actually could be a real possibility. We've got, you know, we're going into election season. I'm not on um, the bandwagon that the Fed is going to lower rates this year, and quite frankly, even if they do, it will be one time, and that's already banked into the market. So it's interesting because, again, People are still spending money, that's true, that's true. But the expectation is out there that eventually rates are gonna go down, eventually housing prices are gonna go down and people have been spending a lot. And if all of those things come together and they don't really happen in the next six months or even by the beginning of 2025, then I think consumers may have a different take for things. But right now people are still spending, obviously wealthy people are spending money with American Express, but you have other people that are still paying the interest rates that they're charging on the credit card. Visa though is down and MasterCard were down in their earnings too. They flipped, they flipped this yeah. week, but again, they were all down. Again, eventually, if rates don't go down, you could see people defaulting on some of these high interest credit cards. And so far, so good though for the banks. Maybe they have already figured it out that, you know, they've already counted for the fact that there's gonna be a certain percentage of defaults, but it's a wait and see right now, really on the Fed for me. And again, if the market is done rallying this yeah. year, that's gonna be a brutal hit for a lot of people that are so bullish yeah. on the market and keep yeah. wanting to go thank along and find Melissa day. and uh, Kevin, thank you both. It's great to see you. And Kevin, I understood what you were saying. I mean, American Express is in a good place. They have Resi, yeah. all right? They acquired Resi. They have a, an affluent customer. Great to see you both. Kevin Kennedy, Melissa